Hey Mars, how's it going? Don't put those dogs onto me. No, I want they pretty harmless. Mate, it's been only two years and you have turned over almost your whole fleet of boats. Pretty much. And you, you've still got the same shitty old dogs. Yeah, some puppies. Don't tell Mel I said that. No, they're gorgeous. So all those boats we've been featuring, like the cold front, well, they're all gone. Like, yep. Were that, did they all have problems? No, <laughs> none. Why? Why? Why have you why have you changed? Well, like the, I said, your, big, your biggest boat was a 22 and a half foot bad boy. Now it's your smallest boat. True. What happened? Don't know. Business got bigger. The man got bigger for bigger boats, bigger trucks. Australia's growing. Um, population's growing. Fishermen want to go further. Speed fishermen wants to go further. Come on. The manufacturer, the production guys told me there's a lot more money in big boats, not these little ones. Is that true? It is, because I've just seen your, your big Ram 3500 there. Well, I need it to tow bigger vessels, yeah. and so do customers. Unfortunately, they're over three tonne, three and a half tonne, so you need um, better towing. The bad boy used to be the biggest boat in your fleet. It's now the smallest, yeah? Yes. Yes. Who, how many bad boys have you built? Uh, There's over 20 bad boys built over a um, period of uh, three, four years. Um, recently, the first bad boy got sold. Customer sold it to upgrade it to the chief, uh, Joe Martindale. And he sold his bad boy and he made $40,000 over a period of four years. Wow. So, uh, so the market actually went up. 10 grand per year. So not just piss fun boats, you can actually make money off Cuda Craft boats? Unfortunately, yes. When did a 24, de it's 24 degrees, yeah? Yes. When did a 24 degree dead rise, 22 and a half foot boat become a family boat? What, what happened? Well, people just love that soft riding hull uh, and the bad boy is quite beamy. So it's eight foot beam, it's stable, it's got big reverse chains. It's just a gorgeous boat all around and it is actually very stable hull. I still think it's the best looking 22 footer going around. Tell me how much how much is a hull these days? Uh, we started with a 103,000 with 300 Yamaha four or five years ago and I think they went up to 127 hull motor trailer with 300 Yamaha or 300 Pro XS as, as this one sits. What, what setup do you like best on a bit on a bad boy? Uh, the bad boy loves uh, 300 horsepower single um, Mercury, Yamaha or Suzuki. And where are these made? They're made here in Malakuda. Yep. Uh, so all the molds are back in Malakuda. So we've got four molds, uh, villain, bad boy, chief, boss. Everything's made back in Malakuda workshop. What's the what's the total weight boat motor trailer on a bad boy? Uh, boat motor trailer with 505 litres of fuel is 2,850 kg. So it's the ba baby of the fleet? Pretty much, yeah. Then the next step is a speed fishing vessel mainly just for speed fishing. Speed fishing. You, obviously you can use it for uh, uh, fishing and uh, end game fishing, which, you know, I've used it for three years and the villain, you know, ticks all the boxes, but it's not as stable as the bad boy because of seven foot beam. Yeah. So obviously with 24 de degree de dead race, she will rock a bit um, at rest. Yeah. So end of the day, we mainly targeting speed fishing only. Yeah. And you know anyone that calls, I say, well, this is a speed fishing hull only. Yeah. Go there, go fast, come back, come back home fast, 
nice and soft, dry, beautiful hull. Tell me where the shape of the villain came from. Well, the villain was originally designed for Bob Magoon in the States. He has used it for a few races, one few races, and uh, it's been reproduced in America by 11 different uh, manufacturers. And we got one here to Australia. We changed the top, we changed a little bit on the bottom, made it a little bit softer. And the top looks a little bit higher, a bit more free bolt, a bit more cabin space, bigger wave breaker with, um, with a lip. And yeah, it should come up pretty good. It's actually designed by Don Aronoff back in the day. Uh, I think it was 1969. And uh, they've used that uh, for a couple of races. And after this one, they went a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger again. So, end of the day, this is probably the beginning of um, Magnum Hulls. This is one of the first hulls they've ever designed. Magnum Hulls? Yeah. Obviously an abalone boat. Tell me, how did the Chief come about? Well, I was... I had two, two three threes formulas in my lifetime, and I worked out of handful at the same time uh, as a deckhand. And uh, I was was in love with the two three three Eden craft. I had a cam craft, I had an Eden craft, and uh, I always wanted something a little bit longer. Mm. Uh, I've been uh, in discussion with Norman from Whitewater Pots for the last eight years to purchase that particular mold. Mm. This is the original, original 25 foot white water mold, which is a blue water classic in the States, in Miami. And uh, after eight years, he gave in. He, I rang him and he goes, I said to him, let's make a deal over the phone right now. He goes, well, Mark, you've been talking to me for the last eight years. Right here, let's make a deal. Mm. So we purchased the mold over the phone. One mold. Uh, so it's a um, bottom mold, top cap for center console and a center console. So come with three molds. We, we didn't took the liner because I don't like the liners. And uh, yeah, the molds arrived in Malakota within six to eight months. To the untrained eye, that's a two, three, three formula. You know, it could con convince anyone that that's a two, three, three formula. What is different? about the Chief to the formula? The major difference, uh, we, they took the rocker out of the 233. They've extended it uh, two feet and they took the other trim tops out of it. So the hull is just a little bit improved over the 233. There's nothing wrong with the 233 and still a gorgeous spot. Um, it's been replicated many times over the years. But what they've, what they've done with the 25, they just put a little extension, uh, they took the rocker out of it and just runs just a little bit better. That's all. I notice it's the only Cuda craft in the fleet with a pod. What, why does it have a pod and not transom mount? Uh, the way the white water run back in the States with a 760 mil pod, uh, we duplicated here in Australia and we can raise the engine just a little bit higher and we still have that lot of water pressure and the hull actually behaves itself a lot nicer. Mm -hmm. And the gearboxes run in a lot fresher water than transom mounted. Mm. This, is an, uh, this is an abalone boat. Who's, who's the chief gonna suit? Look, we've sold a uh, number of chiefs now uh, in center console version. In, uh, then we designed a new top deck for the whitewater hull. So the top deck actually has been cut and shot from the 28 foot boss. So we took uh, one foot from the transom and two feet from the bow and we joined it. So the internals are identical between the boss and the chief. And the uh, 25 Chief, everybody loves it. Work boat, game boat, um, spearfishing boat, 
Yes. I notice you do a console in the Chief as well. Is that the only CUDA craft with a console? So the Chief is in three. Center console, roundabout as you see, and a hard top, just the way the first box was, is made. Why would I get a Chief over, a, say, a bad boy? Well, obviously the size difference. Uh, we got extra one meter in length. Um, another 200 mil in height in the hull. So this hull will run a lot softer in the short sharp job and swell. So obviously it is a lot nicer hull to drive and we got a lot more interior space. We go from 3.2 meters to 3.8 meters and the same beam on the inside. What's our beam here? We're still eight foot beam? We eight foot beam, eight foot two and uh, we've got beautiful heavy duty rub rail on all the pots, no end caps, so you can't rip them off uh, next to the jetties. If you do make a little mistake or the wind pushes you over. I love your, I love your gunnel, gunnel strips. How the long rub rail, been, yeah, it how is. How long have you been doing that? Uh, actually, from day one, we imported the rub rail from the States, from uh, Mercedes, from uh, Taco Marine, and yeah, that's pretty much a uh, Kuda Craft signature. Mm. Um, 60 mil wrap rail with a rope inside. What's the total? We're going to come in under three and a half ton for the, a chief? The chief is just under three and a half, 3.3, 3.4, with uh, 650 litres with a fuel in it. Uh, thanks to Savage Trailers, tandem, 4.5 ton, drive on, drive off and we're saving weight from galvanized to aluminium. So we're going from 1,200 kilo to about 810. So that's 400 kilo with a uh, weight saving. This is the pod. Tell me, what's the pod constructed of and how is it fitted to the Chief? Well, that is a um, 12 and a half mil aluminium, which is half inch uh, main structure. And then the only thing we have added to it is the swimming platforms. So it's a full pole, so you can walk right around it. And uh, it's offset, so we can run the engines a lot higher than having a full hull extension. Are pods uh, trying to fix something on a boat or are they just as good as a transom mount engine? What's your view? There's nothing wrong with the pods, there's nothing wrong with the hulls. It's end of the day, it's your rig up. It's how you fit your engines, your props, what gearboxes you're gonna run, and also, also the weight of the pod and your weight distribution inside the hull, where your fuel tank's position, where your compressors and so on. This, obviously this is a commercial vessel, mm. so we have 70 kilo there, 50 kilo on the wheel hose, we got um, bits and pieces here and there. We got four batteries at the back, four bilge pumps, and so on and so on. So, end of the day, it is weight distribution and how you rig up your boat. It's not always the hull fault. There's nothing wrong with the hulls. It's the rigging. And that's what a lot of people are uh, missing on. There's nothing wrong with a boat in Australia. It's the rigging, end of the day. And that's where a lot of people miss the point. You might say, oh, this bot's not good because it's purposing, it's chain walking. There's nothing wrong with the hull. It's the rigging. So where, where do people get it wrong most commonly? Majority, the engines are fitted too low. Uh, wrong weight distribution. And majority is the engines, the engine feeder. What do they get wrong on the engine other than too low? Uh, wrong propellers, uh, majority it's engines too low, those two factors. Last time I was down here you were a spearfisherman and now you're a Formula One race boat driver. <laughs> T 
tell me oh. how, what's going on with the with the racing. Now I'm still I still do lots of spearing, I uh, love exercising. Uh, uh, Melanie still loves a uh, sweep and abalone and crayfish, so we still do that. Sweep. That hasn't stopped. That's a first. And uh, sweep, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she loves sweep. I've been throwing those things back for years. What do they taste like? They taste really nice if you cook them properly. <laughs> So that, no, nothing's changed here. We're still busy, we're still working hard. What, what has the racing, uh, how has that changed the way you build and fit up boats? Nothing's changed here since 2004. We're still trying to achieve the best of the best in our hulls. And the only thing that we've learned from racing is really the amount of stuff we've damaged in the bots through the races. So we've oh. learned um, secure your batteries a lot better. Oh, come on, Bruce Harris could have told us that one. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, um, bilge pumps, uh, remove everything from certain mercuries from the top and so on. Uh, otherwise they get melted and spewed up. So yeah, you learn a lot and it is it's a good way to learn. What's Kudacraft's kryptonite? Where do they where do they break first? What's kryptonite? Oh, you know, Superman, kryptonite. It's the only thing that could kill him. What's the what's the weak spot on a on a Kudacraft? Let me think about this. What's the weak spot? Probably the driver. Oh, I knew you were gonna say that. That's a cop out. What do you mean? What's a driver? Majority. You, you said you found you were just fixing stuff constantly. Well, I already explained. Oh well, battery, batteries. That's not the boat. That's not the boat's fault. No, you can't destroy the hull. So when you buy that hull from here, it is. You can use it for spear fishing, game fishing, barbecuing, or racing. The warranty still stands ten years. Barbecuing. Oh, well, like you and I did. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> when, when I think when I think cooter craft, I think let's have a barbecue. <laughs> well, it does that too. Quite comfortably. You love your engines. What's your favourite engine at the moment? Look, I love them all. Uh, end of the day, I was always a Mercury man all my life. But you still have to please every customer. And if they have a good relationship with the Yamaha dealer and they've been with Yamaha for 20 years, what's the point trying to twist the arm and go to Mercury or Suzuki? Same with the Suzuki. If they have a good relationship with the dealer and Suzuki, well, sell them Suzuki's. Hmm. If they have a good relationship with Mercury, well, there's no other option. Sell them the Mercury. What? We don't twist customers' arms. No, you have to have this because this is the best. That's bullshit. Just please the customer what they're happy with. You've, ch you've changed. This is not the mark. This is not the mark I knew. It was like Mercury, Mercury. I am Mercury, it doesn't mean <laughs> that all my customers are going to be Mercury's. Let's go to the piece de resistance, the boss. Show me. So last time we were here, this was, this was upright and you were grinding away looking for something, small packages. Uh, just just tell, tell, me, tell me about this. Hub. We've got a ex drug runner hull from Miami. A lot of stuff on the boat. Looks like he might be dumping some more stuff here. Yep, one. Mark this posit, uh, 0922. Did you, did you find anything? Unfortunately, I did not. So I gotta keep working. Um, so we changed the whole bottom. We've made the uh, uh, bow lifting strike and the running strike a little bit smaller. Uh, the chain, we made it a little bit wider towards the back and reversed it, so it grips a little bit better around the corners. But and the strikes you said you, you narrowed. What what does what does a narrow strike do? We, what it makes makes it makes the hull on impact a lot softer, so you have less. So you got a lot less uh, flat surface hitting the water. Uh, obviously, it's going to make it a lot softer. So that's the reason we've done it. This is, has to be the sexiest Australian built boat. Well done. 
Tell us about it. Well, this is the 28-foot boss, which is 8.6 metres. 8-foot uh, two beam, which is towable, 2.5 metres. 24-degree dead race. Uh, as is, this hull weighs 2,860 kilo with a uh, trailer, hull, two engines, and all the hydraulics and the sounders. That's without fuel. Uh, once we put 650 liters of fuel, which is equivalent to give or take 500 kg, so we're still at 3.350. Uh, so, so far we just, we've done 65 hours in it. Uh, we've done the first service on the engines. Uh, we water testing, we own a seventh set of propellers. We're still waiting for the two new sets to come from the States. Uh, when the bot left, Rice Marine was doing around 70 miles an hour with twin 300s. Now the bot does uh, close to 84, 83.7, like, give or take. And uh, I think we should be able to see 85 mile an hour out of 600 horsepower, mm. you know, which is, you know, we use the bot for spearfishing, game fishing, and Sunday and Saturday racing. And, and barbecuing. And barbecuing, mm. exactly. It would, be, is, it would be the world's fastest barbecue boat. Oh, not really, but yeah. <laughs> There's some boats on the market which are smaller than your the trim tabs and certainly much cheaper than these trim tabs. What what are you? What, what's going on here? Well, the uh, Mercury Racing 380 SSs. Uh, might need to keep us in the water. When the... To keep the nose down. When yeah. the stuff gets rough. Uh, Mind we don't use them at all. Uh, offshore, we will use them in neutral position. Some with the gearboxes and some with the drive shafts. And the hull performs perfect. Uh, if it gets really rough and we have to go pretty hard around the bends, then we drop them down a little bit. But at the same time, uh, the fitted level, instead of side onto the hull, uh, for a reason, so when we come off a wave around the corner, say at 60, 70 mile an hour, the, hu the trim top doesn't dig in and doesn't put us into a spin. So the trim top works as part of the riding strike. Yeah, what's, what's that worth? The trim tops? Mm. Um, by the time you buy them, feed them, rig them, they're around 10 grand. Ten thousand dollars! Wow. Um, we've got some more tricky, tricky racing kit here. What's going on there with the jacking plate? Yeah, so we bought the the super heavy duty uh, Bob's machine ja uh, manual jacking plates. We didn't go with the hydraulic like we do on the villains. Sorry, Bob Bob's Bob's machine. Bob's yeah. machine jacking plate. So they actually rated a thousand pounds of five hundred fifty horsepower, which we well underneath the rating and we can fine tune the prop shaft just by doing up this single bolt so at the moment we're running two inches uh, that's a fishing setup and if we want to go racing we will jack this up another 20 mil and we still have plenty of water pressure through the boxes so tell me in in simple terms what the effect of lifting the motor is going to do to the performance of the boat? Well, you got there's less drag on the gearbox, number one. So, if you if you have a good look at this, uh, the only thing that's in the water is actually the skeg, and we're only using the bottom plate of the prop. The exhaust is above the water, hmm. but that's a different gearbox compared to a 200 Yamis or 300 Suzukis, where like I said, like I said, it's a different setup. Hmm. So this setup is more or less is for racing and a bit of fishing and barbecuing. <laughs> uh, tell me what range of movement do you have in the jacking plate? Uh, we've got six inch, mm -hmm. six inches up and down. The transom is 26 inch high. We only got 20 inch legs. 
and we adjust another two inches. So we actually had 28 inch, a 20 inch leg. And we still have 32 PSI of water pressure, which is great. So we can blow the motors up. And, uh, but if you have a look, there's no pickups here. Mm -hmm. that, that's a Sportsmaster gearbox mm -hmm. versus Torquemaster on the 300 Pro XS. So the water pickups are underneath the gearbox. Mm -hmm. So as the water leaves, it comes underneath and we still have lots of uh, water pressure. I've sort of wondered, do you think more recreational boat owners should have jacking plates for different driving circumstances? Running to the shelf, running home from the shelf, water skiing, trawling. Look, definitely it helps a lot on each individual hull. Uh, so if you're running in flat water, you can actually jack your engine up just a little bit higher and you do get better performance and better fuel efficiency here yeah? uh, instead of dragging the full gearbox through the water, which it slows you down and uh, obviously using more fuel. So they do help. Who builds these boats? Is it just you and Mel? Uh, Patrick. Mel, me and me, and uh, yeah, pretty much uh, we got three crew here, and we're pretty happy the way we are. Tell me the fires came pretty close. I can see some black trees just at the back here. Uh, the fires, yeah. Well, well, we ne we nearly lost this business. Uh, we pretty much were doomed, but uh, we worked fifty six hours straight we're supposed to go spear fishing that night and i had sprinklers going we had four sprinklers over the shed we had sprinkler over the 20 foot container where the chemicals are the fire started at wingham which is 55 k's away and uh, i looked at the map and it burned overnight 12,000 acres i looked at the weather southwest is coming yep it's gonna come to malakuda there's not always about it. So, yeah, we had we had to do what we had to do. We worked ourselves off and we saved the business. We're still here. We saved every mold, every boat. And um, yeah, it was a lot of hard work, but sometimes you have to make your own luck in life. Where did you take the molds? I would call the molds down the, down the um, lake and they were all hooked up with uh, snatch straps and we had a villain in gear, ready to go, if you know, if the fire come too close to us. So we're gonna sink all the molds. And this shop was empty, there was nothing here. And uh, we come back, we drove, we drove through the fires. The new Dodge was dis disappeared in flames. Nothing goes, holy shit. <laughs> you know, with four dogs. And uh, come here, the guide was open. Drove in here, run at the back. Fire there, fire here. I go, you know what? We can fight this. So we fought for another. Uh, oh, we fought since 10 a.m. till 2 a.m. Drinking 50 degree coronas. Happy as Larry. How, how scared were you? No, I wasn't scared, but it uh, wasn't fun. Did you think you were going to lose it all? No, not at all. Like, uh, once I rocked up here, I go, radio, you've got to fight it. You've got to fight for your life. Most business people would be content with, like, changing 10 to 20% of their business over five years. You did the villain, you did the bad boy that was successful, and that was the villain. Why can't you take up golf or something and get a pastime? Like, what, what, make, what drives you to just keep producing these amazing machines? I just got passion for boats. I love boats. I love spearing. I love uh, game fishing. Barbecuing. Uh, yep, number one. <laughs> and I love um, Sunday and Saturday racing, which we have six races a year. Uh, Saturday, Sunday. Mm. So, you know, we've been racing for the last two years. We've been very successful. And so we built a new hull for the 85 mile an hour class, mm. not the 60 mile an hour class. 
you know, we, uh, we learned a lot over the past two years and we can pass that on to our consumer, to our customers. So we know how to set up the, the engines, the trailers, the props, the gearboxes and, you know, Mercury, Yamaha, Suzuki, they got different gearboxes. Mm. So with each hull, the setup is going to be different. Mm. Different propellers, mm. different heights, mm. and so on and so on. Mm. Different um, rakes and so on. So from racing, we're learning to get the better hulls and better performance out of them. And the customers are happy. Mm. So it works. Building commercial vessel or recreational vessel or race hull, it works. It reminds me of a, a young Bruce Harris, I think said the same thing. There you go. Every win, bit helps. Win on, win on Sunday, sell on Monday. Well, yeah, most of the time we win on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> and, and we still sell them, like, you know. Do you sell barbecues with the boat? Barbecues. Are, are you more of a external um, mag, mag, magma or are you more a, a the pie warmer? Would you like to buy one? <laughs> I, will, I will supply a barbecue for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, this would make you one of the most progressive boat builders in Australia. Was this always your vision? Look, we haven't stopped yet. Um, this is just the beginning, to be quite honest. Um, like I said, I love boats, I love using them. And yeah, I mean, it's just gonna grow bigger and bigger every year. Okay. Next time you come here, we're gonna have some expression for you. You're teasing me, what, what is it? It's a secret. When are you gonna come to the to Catland? When are you gonna come to Pussy Town? Oh, I got pussy every night. <laughs> <laughs> 